Hi there, Dr. Gary here on the road. We sell dental practices nationwide. Today's topic is, we're dental practice brokers. Today's topic is, can a buyer or a seller get released from a signed dental contract to sale? We're going to talk about that today. As you know, we're now in 28 states selling dental practices. We have 10 employees, including two CPA accountants. And uh, we're available to you from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. Every day except Christmas and Easter. So give us a call. I was a dentist for 13 years and I've been doing the dental practice brokerage for, uh, no, I was a dentist for 25, doing the dental practice brokerage for 13. We try to give you information as it's breaking, real time information, what really happened, what is the story, what's going on. Uh, we try to provide that for you and tell you exactly what's going on on a day to day basis. Once again, our email is uh, dental practice uh, dental practice broker nationwide.com uh, or nationwide dental practice brokers.com and dental practice guide.com. Those two are our main ones. You can always reach us with that. Now, the um, Information you're about to hear is for uh, entertainment purposes. That's not legal or business advice. If you're thinking about selling to a DSO, remember to call us because we've been doing this for a long time. We know who the best DSOs are. And uh, excuse me, it's sunny. It just came through a rainstorm and now it's sunny. I was looking for a rainbow. I didn't see any. But I'm at the beach. It's sunny again. Just came out of uh, one of the major cities. So... Um, if you're thinking about the DSL route and you have a $1.6 million practice or more and maybe an associate, uh, they're still interested. Even though they've consolidated, we know who the best ones are. We know which ones who are not buying single dental offices. We know who's having financial troubles. Uh, give us a call and we'll be more than happy to get you some, uh, some information. All right. The DSOs generally pay our commission. So we hope that that's helpful to you. Certainly is. And uh, based on criteria, most of them will pay our commission. And if you work with us as brokers, often we can get your legal fees reimbursed based on certain criteria. Get them reimbursed upon a successful closing. So that should help you also there. Now, uh, let's talk about this. You have a signed dental contract. You're moving towards dental closing. The buyer has signed the contract. The seller has signed the dental contract. So you're legally bound at this point to move forward. But under what, what circumstances can the buyer and or the seller uh, pull out of the deal after there's a signed dental contract? All right. This makes it different now because you have a signed contract. Well, you need legal advice on this. Speak to your attorney. But from what I've learned in the past, my opinion is the following. That you're in a contract. You're legally bound to buy or sell the practice. However, it is my understanding you really can't be forced to buy the practice. You may have some legal liabilities. I'm under the assumption what you could do is if you really wanted to get out, you can negotiate with the seller, pay off the seller's legal fees, and maybe it'll be okay. I say maybe you must speak to an attorney about this. But let's say the seller lost out on three or four uh, great candidates because he was in contract with you and then you pulled out. Well, there's some financial hardship there, definitely. And what if the practice becomes unsaleable because of a flood and a fire after uh, the contract was signed? Now the seller's going to have a hard time selling it. So... All this is important. So please remember, sorry, when it comes to the contract that is signed, you now have legal obligations, but you still may be able to get out of it. You probably have to negotiate something with the buyer because you've incurred, or the, uh, you know, either you're getting out of the contract, the buyer's getting out of the contract, you've incurred legal fees, the buyer's incurred legal fees, 
but you could probably initiate a lawsuit, but then you gotta pay thousands of dollars to start the lawsuit, and you may not be successful. Remember, these law deals, you never know. You don't know who is going to be, uh, uh, what your true liability is, okay? Because uh, uh, it could get messy. It could get very messy, but you try to avoid that. But you do have a legal liability now. You've, you, Whoever pulled out, has a liability and also your attorney you're going to have fees to the attorney you just can't stop it and say I don't want to go forward so I, I don't want to pay you anything you can't do that you have responsibilities to the attorney response, and the seller has responsibilities to his attorney or her attorney so there's you know there's a financial institute here you may be able to negotiate something with the seller if you're the one that pulled out as a buyer or the seller negotiate something with the, uh, with the buyer to reimburse the legal fees. Maybe. I don't even know. It's a negotiated thing. Your attorney will have to give it some advice. I'm not an attorney. I'm just telling you from what I learned about some things that did seem to work fairly well. So you have ability to get out with legal ramifications. And either way, I think you should try to avoid that. If you're in contract, it must be really bad circumstances to justify it. But the buyer could just be getting cold feet or the seller get cold feet. Well, you got a problem there. And it has to be resolved one way or the other. All right. Thank you for listening. We try to give you everything up to date. Um, this is a um, ongoing process of buying and selling dental practices. And we are uh, involved in it virtually every day, 363 days a year. We think we bring some interesting information to you. And that's it. Thank you.